Hello, my churchers. It's time for a showdown in Badlands to get more cards revealed and reviewed by me. So I waited until most, if not all, of the neutral cards were revealed before doing another video. And I plan on doing maybe another card review every two or three days, depending on how many cards get revealed. So let's begin with the neutral cards, starting off with the legendaries that we haven't covered yet. Kingpin Pud, which is a 6 cost, 6 attack, 7 HP. Minion with the Battle Cry, resurrect your Ogre Gang, give them Wind Fury. And then the Ogre Gang are Ogre Gang Ace. That, that is a 5 cost minion with 5 attack, 4 HP. That has Rush whenever this attack, gain Divine Shield. And then it has a 50% chance of getting Lifesteal instead. We have Ogre Gang Rider, which is a 4 cost minion with 3 attack, 6 HP. Again with Rush with 50% chance to give your Hero plus 3 attack this turn instead of attacking. And then finally we have Ogre Outlaw which is a rush minion with the stereotypical 50% chance to attack the wrong enemy. Sadly, for a fact though, I do know that none of the previous ogres that exist in Hearthstone are going to count as a ogre gang. Only cards that read ogre gang on them will be revived off of King Pud. In standard, this actually doesn't affect you at all. I think the class that will probably be able to abuse this the most is Paladin using Crusader Aura in combination with Horn of the Windlord in order to try to get as much attack on your weapon as humanly possible. But because the random 50% chance of doing anything is not really the best competitive thing in the world, I don't see outside of memes week one this package seeing much play. Now let's get on to the next card which is going to be the corner store and legendary for the quick draw mechanic. Flint Firearm, a 3 cost, 3 attack, 3 HP minion with the battle cry, get a random quick draw card. If you played it this turn, repeat this. Now, we will be seeing a card later on that reduces the cost of quick play cards by 1, and in theory, if you can get a bunch of copies of that out before you slam this down, then in theory you could go infinite. However, given the fact that we have seen only a few quick draw cards so far, the three here and some of the common cards that we'll be going over later. I don't know how consistent this is going to be. It's basically a worse version of Instructor Fireheart in my opinion, where instead of being able to discover a random quick draw card, you won't be able to have that advantage, which will make it a lot less consistent, especially if we do see a lot of quick draw cards within this expansion. All right, let's get onto that cards. The first one is going to be Azurite Giant, a eight cost, eight attack, eight HP elemental that costs one less for each turn in a row you've played an elemental. I'm curious if this is going to reset whenever you don't play an elemental, which would make it even worse than it already is. This is honestly probably the worst giant that we've ever seen in Hearthstone's history, as it is a condition that is incredibly hard to actually fulfill. All right, now for the next card, Cattle Rustler, a 5 cost, 3 attack, 4 HP minion with a battle cry, draw a beast, it costs 3 less. Now, we are going to be seeing a lot of beast synergy within the set, which makes this card way stronger than it would originally look on paper for a lot of classes that might not normally want to run it. I will say, though, this is definitely one of those cards that, while it is a neutral card, it is definitely meant for Hunter. Hunter can easily abuse this either through King Crush or the Colossus minion, thus allowing you to either get it out on turn 6 or 5, depending on which minion you actually hit. You can also use this on something like Hollowed Hound in order to get out earlier, and the buffs that you can easily give Hollowed Hound, which will allow you to heal yourself up to full, increasing the survivability of Big Beast Hunter once again. Overall, this is a card that I can't see a world where it doesn't see some type of play. Now let's get on to the next card, which is going to be Gatling Snake, a 3 cost, 1 attack, 5 HP beast. At the end of your turn, load 2 bullets that deal 1 damage each. Death Rattle, fire them at random enemies. The one downside about this card is while it is an end of turn effect, it is going to be something that your opponent is probably going to wanting to hard remove really, really quickly, which means you're not going to be able to stack the additional damage up that high, making this card probably really bad in the long run, but very flavorable. Now let's get onto the next card, which is going to be Audi Finn, a two cost, two attack, three HP Murloc. Whenever your hand has less than three cards in it, get a random Murloc. Then we have all of the Murlocs that currently exist in standard rotation. There are a few high cost minions within this batch of cards such as gigafin or one amalgam ban which are something that you probably 
aren't going to want to randomly generate off of this since you are going to want to try to slam down as many free minions as you can as humanly possible. This is definitely one of those cards that will allow you to refill your hand really easily with a Murloc deck, which is something that the deck historically has struggled a little bit with. Overall, if we see additional Murloc support, since we do have Clownfish in rotation, I could see a Murloc Shaman deck come back out of nowhere. Now let's get onto the next card, which is going to be Burrow Buster, a 5 cost 6 attack for HP mech. Rush, Battlecry, Excavate a Treasure. We've seen the treasures before. This is a decent excavating card. However, I think there are just a lot better other excavating cards that have been revealed so far that you would rather run over a five cost minion like this. Now let's get onto a return or at least a blast from the past. Azerite Chain Gang, aka Serenite Chain Gang, which is a four cost to attack three HP minion with Taunt, Battlecry, Quick Draw, summon a copy of this. This is very similar again to Serenite Chain Gang, except you also have the Quick Draw benefit of this card, which means you can get actually three copies of it all on the board on one turn if you slam it down the same turn you draw into it, which actually might make it a lot more powerful than the original version, but the majority of the time, you're probably only going to get one additional copy. There are a lot of ways in standard rotation right now to actually buff this up, especially in Paladin. Honestly, this is a, one of those cards that I could easily see uh, having a lot of play. All right, let's get on to the next card, which is Snake Oiler Seller, a four cost, four attack, five HP Naga with Death Rattle Shuffle, two tradable Snake Oils into your opponent's deck, which are basically zero cost spells with tradable and essentially deal zero damage. I will say, I originally read this card completely wrong. I thought it shuffled the snake oils into your deck instead of your opponent's deck, which made it a lot stronger in my opinion. However, because it doesn't, this is a card to try to counteract the Highlander cards that we are going to be seeing in the set. Now, speaking of a card that I earlier talked about, Bounty Board, a 3 cost, 0 attack, 5 HP minion that causes your Excavate, Quick Draw, Tradable, and Legendary cards cost 1 less. Again, in combination with Firearm, this could be incredibly deadly, but you are going to have to rely on getting more than just two copies, since most of the Quick Draw cards do cost more than two mana. Next card revealed was Sunspot Dragon, a 6 cost, 6 attack, 6 HP dragon with tradable. Lifesteal, quick draw, deal 6 damage. Now, if you find ways to make additional copies past the initial 2 copies, and you somehow draw into this while you have Thaddeus on board, where you can just slam down multiple of these battle cries over and over again, you may make some fun little OTK. But I will say, this card is basically 6 mana do nothing if you do not get the quick draw ability on it. Overall, again, just a decent card, but I don't think it's going to be something that people hard run in most decks. Now for the next card, which is going to be High Noon Duelist, a 3 cost, 4 attack, 3 HP minion with Death Rattle, both players draw. Destroy the card that costs less. Now, <laughs> this is one of those cards that is going to be incredibly frustrating to play against and is going to ruin a lot of people's combos, which makes my life really hard. But if you somehow use this card in, I don't know, maybe a mill DK list where you're using Death Rattle to copy the Death Rattle to a few other minions and then trying to purposely destroy some of your opponent's lower cost cards that they need for their combo, then this card could see play. But honestly, I think the conditions to make this card playable are so low that it probably isn't going to. Now for the next card is Horseshoe Slinger, a 3 cost, 2 attack, 2 HP mech, battle cry, deal 2 damage to a random enemy minion, quick draw, and one of its neighbors. Out of all the quick draw cards, this is probably the worst out of the entire bunch so far, because you have no control over what minions that it is actually going to hit. Let's get onto the next card, which is named after one of the world champions, Bunny Stomper, a 2 cost, 1 attack, 3 HP beast. Your beasts have rush. This is a great enabler for Thunderbringer since it does allow you to rush your Thunderbringer into one of your opponent's minions. Sure, that's going to be a 10 mana combo, making it a little bit harder to pull off, but in classes that didn't make Thunderbringer instantly go off, this card is actually probably pretty decent. 
just because of the fact that it does allow you to enable the combo without having to worry about your opponent stealing your Thunderbringer and completely ruining your day. Now let's get on to the next card, which is going to be Saloon Brewmaster, a two cost to attack two HP minion with Battlecry return a friendly minion to your hand, give it plus two plus two. Just a better youthful brewmaster. It's interesting that the brewmasters are going to continue to bounce cards back to our hand. I'm very curious if this also means if we ever see Monk as an added class into the game, that that's going to be one of the central identities of it, just because of how consistent it looks like brewmasters have been able to do it over the ages of Hearthstone. Well, I don't think this card will see too much play because the original Brewmasters don't see play currently, I do think it has a lot more potential for some wacky combos that some people will end up coming up with. Let's get onto the next card, which is going to be Trapdoor Spider, a two cost, one attack, two HP beast. Stealth Poisonous, after your opponent plays a minion, attack it. Oh no, this... <laughs> This card in combination with the Jailer, at least where it currently stands as the Jailer, would be basically infinite removal for whatever minions your opponent slams down after you slam down the Jailer. However, because the Jailer is currently banned and will probably get some type of rework in either the next balancing patch or by the time this set actually comes out, I, hey, I don't know how to rate this card. If the Jailer stays consistent with what it is currently, then I think this card will probably see play in a Jailer-based deck. However, if the Jailer has his ability changed completely, your minions aren't completely immune for the rest of the game, I don't think this card will see too much play. All right, let's get on to the next card, which is going to be Gold Pander, a 2 cost, 1 attack, 2 HP minion. At the end of your turn, draw a card. Great card for aggro based decks that need additional draw early in the game sure it has a weak stat line but that's probably on purpose just because if this could consistently stick on the board and had the end of turn draw effect it would be incredibly broken the next card that got revealed is cactus rager a two cost five attack one hp minion with poisonous it's been a while since we've seen a Rager, however, I honestly don't expect this one to see too much play. And that's honestly all I have to say about this card. And now for the next one, which is a Miracle Salesman, a 1 cost, 2 attack, 2 HP, Death Rattle minion. Get a tradable Snake Oil, and we went over these before. A 0 cost card that deals 0 damage. Now, in Miracle Rogue, <laughs> this is basically 2 free cards. For your Sinstone Graveyard, which means you can increase the stats on that by plus two plus two, but I just slamming down these two cards back to back. You can also use this in combination with the one drop elemental that Rogue has access to to instantly trigger the death rattle. Honestly, Miracle Rogue is something I'm really frightened about with this card in particular. However, I could also see maybe Miracle Druid using the card just because of the fact that you could, in theory, use the moonbeam package in order to otk your opponent as this is a free spell that allows you to do a bunch of damage as long as you have a bunch of spell damage minutes on board <laughs> i guess we're going to continue the tradition of having moonbeam druid as one of my initial theory crafts for the set once it comes out unless druid gets something a little bit more interesting all right, hot off the presses are the next nine cards for the neutral pool. The first one is going to be Greedy Partner, which we're going to be seeing similar cards for both the three cost pool and the four cost pool. For this, it's going to be a two cost minion with two attack, three HP. Valkyrie, if you're holding another two cost card, get a coin. Now, this actually is an incredibly easy condition for a lot of decks to fulfill. A lot of decks do run two cost cards. It's actually pretty hard to build a deck that isn't centered around having at least one or two copies of a two cost card. And this allows you to have a coin that would in theory allow you to pull off a bigger combo if you're trying to get some additional mana cheat out. Because of how greedy I am when it comes to combos, this should enable some pretty greedy combos. Now for the next card, which is going to be Line Dance Partner, a three cost minion, three attack two hp but okay if you're holding another three cost card summon a random three cost minion 
while this condition also isn't the hardest in the world to fulfill honestly the payoff of getting a second three cost minion for three mana isn't probably going to always be the best thing i can see this maybe seeing some play in a aggro deck where you're trying to spam out as many minions as humanly possible but outside of this you're not going to want to rely on random generation in order to flood your board all right for the final partner that we got rowdy partner a four cost minion with four attack three hp that if you're holding a four cost card deal four damage because four cost out of the three pools is probably the one that you're most least likely going to have additional cards for then this card probably won't see too much play there are just better ways to do direct damage to your opponent's face let's get on to the next card which is going to be eroded sediment a three cost four attack three hp elemental battle cry if you've played an elemental last turn discover an elemental from the past so discover effects are always really really nice generally speaking while the elemental pool is probably one of the biggest tribes that we have in hearthstone just because of the fact that they've existed since the beginning of hearthstone i do think this is probably quite playable it adds a three cost minion synchronize in order to randomly generate that also allows you to generate an additional card it allows you to find like late game threats which is something that elemental decks are currently really missing now for the next elemental we have dang blast elemental four cost three attack three hp elemental taunt death rattle deal three damage to all minions except for friendly elementals so i'm assuming this means we're getting a lot of elemental support in this set we've already seen quite a bit of it however this card kind of really cements the idea because of the fact that they actually added the keyword friendly to this in the past, a card that was printed like this would have actually just done damage to all minions except whatever tribal tag they are a part of, which makes this card a lot better than the previous versions of similar cards in the past. Now, because it costs 4 mana, I don't know how usable this card is going to be in the long run. It's a little bit boring of a card, but it does show a really cool progression in Hearthstone card design to include the keyword friendly. Now let's get on to the next card, which is going to be Whelp Wrangler, a 2 cost 2 attack 3 HP minion. With at the end of your turn, get a 1-2 Whelp with Taunt. And of course, the Whelp is going to look like this, and it's adorable. I will just straight out say this. It is a card that is very similar to the Vicroll that we have from the previous set of Titans, and also similar to some of the Tendril generation that we do have from the Titans mini set. Both of which do see some type of play here and there so i could see a world where this easily see play just because it, it does give you additional minion at the end of your turn in your hand that only costs one mana and could protect your other key minions such as this minion the only downside of the fact is you're going to need some type of other taunt to protect it for the first turn but it does add a dragon to maybe a menagerie aggro based deck that might not normally have it because there aren't really that many good cheap dragons all right, now for the next card, which is going to be Gaslit Gatekeeper, a 3 cost, 3 attack, 4 HP undead. Battle Cry, shuffle your hand into your deck, and then draw that many cards. <laughs> if you've been around on my channel for any bit of time, you know I love me some good Sir Finley action. I have the worst luck when it comes to keeping cards in the deck that I really want to keep in the deck. And this honestly is a pretty good card to replace Sir Finley once he rotates out you can run two copies of it instead of one now most decks are probably going to want to run two copies of this but if you are running a deck that really wants to keep certain minions or spells in your deck until you can discount them till later then this card is actually probably pretty good you can run those two copies it's also worth mentioning there is a fun little demon hunter otk combo that you could in theory use this in combination with with mind bender where you're trying to drop as many cards from your deck as humanly possible and this will allow you to draw cards that will actually count for that battle cry however then you will have to hopefully not randomly draw back into them until you can discount them once again with whatever you're trying to use and now for the next card which is going to be dry scale deputy a two cost to attack two hp naga with battle cry the next time you draw a spell get a copy of it <laughs> <laughs> warrior is going to have a field day with this card you can use this in a warrior deck where you're only running basically one spell and if you slam this down before you draw into black rock and roll you'll get additional copy if you have the second copy of dry scale deputy you might as well get three copies of black rock and roll right <laughs> the fact that 
Warrior will be able to scale so consistently with Black Rock and Roll. I can't see a world where this doesn't see play. Now, let's go on to the final card revealed so far, which is Tram Mechanic. A 1 cost, 2 attack, 1 HP. Minion with Death Rattle, get a Barrel of Sludge. Toxic Waste, handle with care. And the Barrel of Sludge is basically a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reference, except it's a frog instead, which is going to be a 2 cost fail spell that whenever... This is play, destroyed, or discarded, deal 3 damage, lowest HP enemy. Now, <laughs> this is one of those things that looks really cool on paper, and the fact that it says, or destroyed, makes me wonder if we're going to see a lot of cards that destroy spells within your hand. We already are seeing a bunch of discard warlock support in this set, or I'm assuming we will, since we saw the first card revealed so far was discard warlock. And this is a low cost card for that card, which would make this a perfect card for a turn one play in Discard Warlock. Overall, three damage is nothing to scoff at, especially because it can just hit your opponent's face if you have wiped out their board. There's just a lot of possibilities with this card, and it is extremely flexible, which is really good. And it also is a fell spell, which is something that not a lot of classes have access to. Overall, Honestly, between these two cards, I can see them seem a lot of play. Now, those were all the cards revealed so far. We're still missing one legendary. That was kind of leaked out earlier in the week, and it's going to be probably a neutral Reno Jackson hero card, which could be incredibly cool. We know it's going to remove cards from the board, but I don't really want to show something that's been leaked out, so we're not including it in this video. But like always, let me know which cards you're most looking forward to using out of this bunch of neutral cards. Because honestly, I think the Ogre Gang is something that I'm really looking forward to. Dry Skill Deputy is something for wacky combos that I'm lo really looking forward to. There's a lot of real fun cards in this neutral pool this time around. And like always, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, bye bye.